I feel infinitely more prepared for an emergency now that I've changed a tire and I've caught my breath. I've wiped the oil off of my hands. And, but I wanna talk a little bit about what you should have in your car in case something happens where you can't change your tire and drive out of it. So Jim, you have a couple things here uh, on the back of this car that you wanna make sure that we have in our car. Why don't you start going over it? What's this stuff? That's well, antifreeze. That's okay. Uh, you get in an overheat situation, you've got a leak, something, you're gonna lose some antifreeze. It's never a bad idea to keep a gallon in the trunk of your car just to get you from where you are to a safe point. It brings up a good point that you don't know you're going to need it until you need it. Right. So you might as well just have it around. That makes sense. Yeah. And so along the same lines. Quart of oil. Uh, you just never know. There's cars that develop problems with using oil that you might get into a place where your engine's making a lot of noise and you just need to get to a safe spot. Quart of oil can get you a long ways. Why not just have it? And this would be the other fluid. That and this is, is going along what you fluid. were showing me yes. inside. Okay. Yes, that's for your winter weather where you're using a lot of washer fluid when it's snowing, you're following semis, you may need to stop at a rest stop and refill. Okay, so we've got the fluids here. Now we have a couple little packages. What is this red thing? This is a little more for the hardcore people. See, if I you're alongside the highway or something and it's night, these are triangles and there are road flares in You know, here. I would think that's a good idea because I'm thinking emergencies don't happen always when it's the perfect temperature and it's light out and everyone's driving back and forth. So if I'm driving in a dark part of, on a highway, I might wanna have something like this. Right, and you never know when it could happen. And it's just a couple different, there's, there's basically triangles. Three triangles in there and they're all reflective. And you just put them behind you or in put front? Them, you put them in behind and in front of the car and this will warn people that you're there especially if your lights aren't on. And you know, in the winter, it's dark a majority of, mm -hmm. I mean, it seems like it gets dark um, like at five o'clock, right. so it's good to have. Right. And the last thing is this bag. This so what bag, is in here? This is your emergency survival kit. Okay. In here, you've got a flashlight and there are batteries. Okay. This is a cone to put alongside the car. You've got- There's snacks in here. Light sticks. You break them, you've got emergency drinking water, you've got some uh, non-perishable food stuff. Okay, I'm gonna try to take some of this stuff out. A poncho. Yep. Okay. Here's your drinking water, is in pouches like this. A rescue blanket. Yes. It's the smallest blanket I've ever seen, Jim. Yeah, I've never seen one like that either. Well, it looks like um, something the military would have. So, and all of this stuff, there's batteries in here. Mm -hmm. um, this is emergency food, yes, so I was joking, food. but there really is food yeah. in here. There's a a candle. candle. This should be a Swiss Army knife type of thing. Duct tape. Okay. There's a roll matches. of duct tape. You got matches. There's and this looks mask. like a kit that you can buy. Right. These are available at most parts stores. Uh, I picked mine up from my local car quest, but that's... Okay. But yeah, they're available everywhere. And for Need Inspiration fans, if you go onto my website or and follow me um, as a Facebook fan on Need Inspiration, we'll be giving away one of these. And I think this is a really good idea. I don't, I'll confess, I don't have anything in my car, but when you start thinking about all the mm -hmm. things that are in here, it's a really useful tool. Everyone should have something like that. I mean, we do live in Iowa, we do have bad weather, you never know when you're gonna spend a night in your car. And this doesn't take up a lot of room. Jim, thank you so much for showing me this. And You're welcome. Uh, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about when you actually do have to take a car in for maintenance. You know, sometimes women think, well, do I really need every filter replaced? What are you telling me that's truthful? What isn't? How do I find a place to um, maintain a car? And we'll talk about that when we come back. Hey there, I'm the new G4 in town. Wanna take me for a spin? At 45 miles per gallon, I'll take you anywhere you wanna go for a long, smooth ride. You'll love my curves and sleek packaging. Jump on in. With seating for four, I have plenty of room to love. Honey, I'm 11'9", which makes me clearly irresistible. I'm cute, unique, and stand out in a crowd. Plus, I'm really fun. Introduce me to your friends. They're gonna love me too. We're 
in the service department at Des Moines Motors, and I wanted to talk to Jim about taking your car and be serviced. We've talked about maintenance, we've talked about emergencies, but another huge part about car ownership is making sure that your car is maintained appropriately. Uh -huh. So tell me, uh, because it sounds like there's just trust involved when you bring your car in. You want somebody, you want to take it to someone that you can trust. Obviously, you can trust Des Moines Motors. Um, what are the things that I should be looking for to find um, a group that will maintain my car for me? Well, start by getting referrals from people you know. You know, that gives you a good baseline of who you can talk to. And then get to know the people at the dealership. You know, talk to your service advisor, talk to your technician, depending on how it's set up. Uh, but you should, they should be able to develop a relationship with you to where you're comfortable with them, they're comfortable with you, and it'll be mutually beneficial. And one more thing, red flags. So if, you know, picture me, I'm a woman, clearly I just changed a tire for the first time today, so I don't know a lot about cars. What are some things that I can look for so that if I am being taken advantage of, I'll spot it? You know, it's it's hard to say. You know, I feel like I trust my people enough that I don't worry about it very sure. much. But uh, I'm when sure you've you, had horror stories oh, where someone comes absolutely. in. Absolutely. Yeah. And generally, what I'll tell people is, when in question, have them show you. And it would be. I would think it'd be okay to have someone else take a look at it if you mm -hmm. if you feel like you need to. If you're not comfortable with it, take the car, go get a second opinion. Uh, Chances are it's going to verify the first opinion, but sometimes they're different and you might feel more comfortable with that one. Jim, that was really helpful. Well, I try. Thank you. Uh, I want to say thank you right now for um, walking through all these different things. If you want more information about the experts or the information shared on this episode, just go to needinspiration.com. It's all listed there. Thank you so much for listening and I'll see you next week. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Need Inspiration. We're proud to bring a new episode each and every week. Stop into Des Moines Motors and see our incredible line of noble cars, electric motor vehicles, and quality pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs. We'll see you on the next episode of Need Inspiration.